problem is, either I'm going to be too big for the world, or the world's going to be too big for me. For years, one of the worst things a female character could be was fat. To be overweight was seen as a fate worse than death. You died, and they turned you into a size 16? Pretty much. That is so unfair. The fat woman was often portrayed as a cautionary tale, the antithesis to the popular skinny girl, and for her failure to starve herself, she was mercilessly mocked by her peers. But the funny fat woman turns it around. She owns her size and those laughs. As a character, she can be identified by her willingness to be the punchline. What are you doing? I'm doing horizontal running. She's also usually confident about herself and her appearance. I know I'm the hottest in this joint. She takes bold risks and doesn't worry about other people. Oh, yeah, blind person walking here. If this person would just scoot over, would you mind, sir? And she's quirky and upbeat. Oh my god, why are you looking at me like you Stacey Dash and I just told you you black? Except when she's being a sarcastic smartass. You did not get Montreal and that is only because you did one of the worst sets I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Above all, the funny fat woman is, well, funny. And compared to a history of characters who were made to feel nothing but shame, this might seem like a tentative step forward for body positivity. But the trope also reinforces the old idea that women characters should be sexy or amusing. And often, we're still laughing at her, not with her. Monica, why don't you finish off these pies? I don't have any more room in the fridge. <laughs> Here's our take on the many complexities of the funny fat woman, what makes her different from the funny fat man, and whether we can ever get over her size. Look, give me what she got, but while you at it, make that skinny ass protein patty a fat ass double beef patty with extra mayo. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. It's like your own personal film festival, streaming anytime, anywhere. Hey everyone, we're so excited to announce that The Take is launching a brand new merch line. It's a celebration of everything that makes The Take unique. A love of movies and TV, an appreciation of smart analysis and original ideas, and a desire to start real dialogue with the question, what's your take? Your support of this channel shows that thoughtful, positive conversations can be had in this complex, messy world. So thank you for watching and check out our limited edition designs available on the merch shelf now before they're gone. Patty Patty's huge. The funny fat woman is first and foremost an object of ridicule. They used to try to blow me up. They threw firecrackers at my head. Beyond the jokes, the bullying, or the outright mean comments her character might endure, movies and TV often treat her body itself as a joke. <laughs> Jesus, Megan. I'm sorry, I want to apologize. I'm not even confident of which end that came out of. She's often depicted as a glutton, seen shoveling food into her mouth with no self-control. You didn't just sit on my Kit Kats, did you? Meanwhile, she's typically reduced to a supporting character, given goofy subplots that see her providing comic relief for the real storylines involving her more conventionally attractive, emotionally intelligent female friends. The funny fat woman is often made to seem socially awkward and even downright annoying, desperate to be everyone's friend. You monopolize my time and then you make me feel guilty about not spending time with you. If she's slightly older, she's often typecast as matronly and overbearing, domineering and robbed of all her femininity. This is especially true among women of color who are often cast as sassy, plus-sized black mothers and grandmothers who dish out insults and unsolicited advice. Men Their lack of sex appeal, often combined with a hyperactive libido, becomes a source of comic disgust, as seen in the common trope of black men donning fat suits to play them. Show me a lovely evening, then I'll take him home and give him hot, lovely relations. The funny fat woman is thus presented as a contrast to the feminine ideal, unsexy, coarse, and with a dark and abrasive sense of humor. I look like someone's homophobic aunt. Sometimes we're shown how her behavior actually masks a deep insecurity and even anger about her weight. It's easy for you to spot your self-esteem BS. Do you have any idea what it's like to be a teenage girl and to look like this? 
For example, the title character in Netflix's Sierra Burgess is a loser is funny, but she can also be cruel, engaging in cyberbullying and catfishing and manipulating her friends and her love interest to her own selfish ends. You think I'm mean? You should check the mirror, because your looks are the least ugly thing about you. Still, we're meant to see how she justifies her actions because of her body image issues, as well as the understanding that if she didn't act out this way, she'd otherwise be invisible. Honestly, had we not met the way that we had, maybe I wouldn't have noticed you. But there's another kind of funny fat woman, one whose boisterous personality is born not of just acceptance of her size, but ownership. With her eponymous 90s sitcom, Roseanne Barr came to epitomize this kind of plus-sized woman. Cool, cocky, and uncompromising. It doesn't a fatty diet. I mean, won't it make you fat? So? Roseanne viewed being overweight not only as no big deal, but a rejection of being inauthentic and uptight. When I watch that show Friends, you know, that has all those whiny girls that are nothing but hair and bones, and they're like drinking those triple espressos and stuff, and I'm just like, hey, go for the muffins! In more recent years, we've seen her descendants in characters played by Melissa McCarthy and Rebel Wilson, who have further redefined the funny fat woman as someone who doesn't care what anyone thinks about her. They called me a freak. Do you think I let that break me? Think I went home to my mommy crying, oh, I don't have any friends. Oh, Megan doesn't have any friends. No, I did not. In movies like Bridesmaids, Ghostbusters, and The Heat, McCarthy portrays women who are not only comfortable with themselves, but who can't understand anyone who doesn't live as freely as they do. What are those? What, what are those? Stop, stop it. To my Spanx, they hold everything together. Why, what's gonna f come f popping out? They're also unapologetically sexual. You feel that steam heat coming? That's from my undercarriage. Okay. That can go up and higher. Similarly, Rebel Wilson's Fat Amy in the Pitch Perfect movies has an abundance of self-esteem, wielding her size as her superpower. Crushed it. Both McCarthy and Wilson have been outspoken about using their roles to promote body positivity, although Wilson in particular has also faced criticism for failing to acknowledge the path laid by women of color. After Wilson called herself the first plus-sized woman to lead a romantic comedy, some were quick to point out that others had gotten there first, including Queen Latifah and Monique. In fact, the black woman has largely been a pioneer for the funny fat woman. Her early depictions were largely rooted in the mammy stereotype, with plus-sized women playing housekeepers who dispensed funny, no-nonsense wisdom to her white employers. I don't eat too fast. Ain't no need to have it come right back up again. But beginning with movies like Monique's Fat Girls and Queen Latifah's Last Holiday and Just Right, they assumed agency over their stories and themselves. Hello, Denzel. More modern plus-sized black women, like Parks and Recreation's Donna, are strong, confident individuals who know they're desirable, and their comedy comes from how much quiet power they exert over others. Donna? Gentlemen. Insecure's Kelly exudes a similar self-assurance. Selfie! Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm fine as Kelly is still a sharp wit, and she owns her sexuality in a way we've become accustomed to with the funny plus-sized woman. That white boy took me apple picking. End of story. Really? Fine. We f***ed in the orchard. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. But more importantly, she's a genuine person with complex feelings, one who's not just there to make us laugh. And I'm not trying to be selfish, but I'm losing my best friend to a goddamn baby. <laughs> I thought fat guys are supposed to be jolly. Long before the funny fat woman, there was the funny fat guy, the jolly, good-natured fat man who's been making audiences laugh since Shakespeare's Falstaff. Do I not dwindle? Oh! <laughs> My skin hangs about me like an old lady's loose guard. <laughs> The funny fat guy was a linchpin of early on-screen comedy. Silent film star Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle became one of Hollywood's first and most famous stars, raking in unheard millions to play bumbling oafs. The duo Laurel and Hardy mined most of its comedy from juxtaposing the pompous, portly Hardy against the skinny, guileless Laurel. We've only got a couple more steps. Now both together, speed, pull! And Jackie Gleason became one of TV's earliest stars as the honeymooner's Ralph Cramden, whose weight is a constant source of jokes. I'm not the kind that eats and runs. Eats and runs? 
The way you eat, you're lucky if you can walk. The funny fat guy has long been the star of the show, from John Belushi to John Candy to Chris Farley, and his weight has always been an essential part of the act. Fat guy in a little coat. Fat guy in a little coat. Don't. <laughs> in fact, being a fat man is often seen as being inherently funny. You shouldn't have lost all that weight, man. There's nothing funny about a physically fit man. On the surface, these funny fat guys would seem to have a lot in common with the funny fat woman. They're portrayed as socially awkward. I swear by the moon and the stars. Bullied with mean comments and portrayed as gluttonous and even disgusting. Get in my belly! But the funny fat guy and the funny fat gal are not on equal footing, and it's not just in terms of which one gets to be the lead. For starters, women face a double standard as to what even constitutes fat. I am not overweight, I fluctuate between chubby and curvy. The term Hollywood fat has been used to describe actors who are perfectly healthy, yet are deemed overweight by the size zero standards of celebrity. Weight? 138 pounds. And of course, this most often applies to women. You know, like, it's, it's so refreshing that Mindy like, feels it comfortable to like let herself go and be a fat sea monster. <laughs> the notion has also been propagated in movies like the Bridget Jones trilogy, where Renee Zellweger's Bridget obsesses over her ideal weight, convinced she'll die, in her words, fat and alone. Weight, 4,000 pounds. I'm enjoying a relationship with two men simultaneously. The first called Ben, the other Jerry. As Zellweger herself has said, Bridget is a perfectly normal weight, and I've never understood why it matters so much. No male actor would get such scrutiny. Why are you dancing around in that tent business? <sighs> because I don't want you to see any of my wobbly bits. Indeed, men don't have to worry about that standard. Does she take the cake or what? She takes the whole bakery, huh? There's far more latitude for what constitutes a truly fat man, and their weight is far from a hindrance to their happiness. Woohoo! Look at that blubber fly! The funny fat man is considered a viable romantic lead, no matter how out of shape he might be, and he's regularly paired with beautiful love interests who don't mind, or even seem to notice his size. Want one? I'd better not. On TV, the trope of the fat guy with the beautiful skinny wife is so common, sites have devoted entire lists to the phenomenon. In these pairings, the men are implied to be sweet and affectionate, smart and good providers, or otherwise boasting the kind of attractive personality women can't help but be drawn to. You are still the most handsome man in the world to me. No, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this is the stark opposite of the funny fat woman, who's almost wholly desexualized and regarded as an object of disgust and pity. A fat woman's sexual desire is usually played for laughs. I'm glad he's single, because I'm going to climb that like a tree. And when men are attracted to fat women, it's fetishized or regarded as a sign of a character's generally low standards. Chevy Chaser. Meanwhile, the plus-sized woman is saddled with partners who are less than ideal, someone they're forced to settle for. Hulu's Shrill presents a generally body-positive spin on the funny fat woman, casting A.D. Bryant as someone who learns to embrace her size and disregard anyone who doesn't. But you need a trainer! Come on, girl, you owe it to yourself. You don't have to settle for this. F you. Yet for most of the series, she's stuck with Ryan, an embarrassing man-child who thinks only of himself. Hey, my roommates are here, so you're cool with going out of the back again, right? As Ali Drucker speculates in The Cut, Annie sticks with her bare minimum boyfriend in part due to the fraught ways society has leveled the self-esteem and romantic aspirations of plus-size women. Maybe if I was just sweet enough and nice enough and easygoing enough with any guy, that that would be enough for someone. Annie, you're being so mean to yourself. The funny fat man is seen as more than just his weight. The funny fat woman is defined by it. As the very existence of Shrill suggests, we've become slightly more mindful of body positivity, creating movies and TV that center overweight characters without making them the butt of the joke. People like pretty things. You're not a thing. We've even seen actors like Melissa McCarthy and Rebel Wilson moving away from the funny fat woman roles that made them famous toward more dramatic work that shows their full range. I need you to get $10,000. I'm months behind in my rent. My cat is sick. There are arguably more overweight characters in prominent parts than ever, though it's still only a small percentage of overall roles. 
What? No. No, I'm not the Jonah Arc of Fat Girls. According to a study of the top 100 films of 2016, a mere two women larger than a size 14 were cast in a leading or co-leading role, while there were only three to be found among the leads of the top 50 TV shows. Meanwhile, even a marginal increase in representation doesn't necessarily mean that the fat woman's story will be treated with any greater empathy or diversity in the stories they get to tell. The lives of even those more body-positive characters still tend to revolve around their weight. His life is going to be challenging enough. He doesn't need to have a dad who's going to drop dead one day trying to teach him how to tie his shoes. Oh, like his mom might. And whether or not it's played for laughs, the plus-sized woman's weight continues to define the way others perceive her and how she perceives herself. Maybe it's the people who judge you who need to change. Well, good luck with that. In shows like This Is Us or films like Britney Runs a Marathon, the character's weight loss journey often is her story arc. Let's get you healthy. I want you to try losing between 45 and 55 pounds. On screen, overweight women's relationships are dominated by conversations about their size, and more often than not, their friends and family still end up implicitly shaming them for it. Well, are you doing the almonds between meals? Yeah, I'm doing the almonds. They're so satisfying. Sometimes when I have six almonds, I feel like I had 12 almonds. Even when she is supported and reassured that she's perfect just the way she is, the plus-sized character herself will be overcome with self-doubt, seeing herself as undesirable and unworthy of love. You're an 11 and I'm a 4. I've got no idea what you're talking about. You should be going out with people like Stacy. Not someone like me. Women continue to face disproportionate scrutiny of their appearance in the real world, leading to internalized body image and self-esteem issues, so it's understandable that movies and shows would attempt to reflect this with stories focusing on a character's own weight struggles. But as Yvette Dion writes in Yes! Magazine, fat acceptance activists also want a world where people of size are on screen in narratives that don't center on their weight. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. You want a bite? <laughs> what do you think I'm doing on this machine here? Making butter? Reassuringly, we have seen some examples of this. Booksmart's Molly doesn't look like the usual rail-thin teen we're used to, and refreshingly, the film doesn't comment on it at all. As actress Beanie Feldstein told The Independent, she's actively resisted the idea of women being defined by their weight, saying, As I got older, I just refused to accept it. And so I want to be a part of art that refuses to accept it as well. Who allowed you to be this beautiful? Who allowed you to be this beautiful? Who allowed you to take my breath? Away. And while the characters in Shrill and Dietland do make their weight part of their story, they're also more concerned with changing their worldview rather than themselves. Shrill's Annie doesn't just learn to accept her body, but to celebrate it and to not let other people's opinions of it impede her from getting what she truly wants out of life. And there were so many people just like living in their bodies and enjoying their life, and that was un. Unbelievable to me. The funny fat woman has evolved from being an awkward sidekick into a confident lead, and just as she's become more than just her weight, she's also become something more than just funny. She's a complex human being who can laugh or cry, go wild, or get angry, just like the rest of us. I'm 16, 16 stern, and desperate for a shag. Oh yeah, and I've been in a mental hospital for a while. And even when she is played for laughs, more and more she's in on the joke. After all, Melissa McCarthy and Rebel Wilson aren't just starring in these films, they're often producing and writing them, too. That said, should we still be laughing at fat jokes at all? Freeze! Nobody move! <laughs> There is an inherent shame to the fat joke that will never cease to be problematic, no matter how willing the participant. I'll have a club sandwich and an order of fries, order of onion rings, and then two slices of cake. Do you want any cake? No. Three slices of cake and a Diet Coke. At the same time, as Refinery29's Sadaf Hassan writes, sometimes when I'm watching McCarthy and Wilson, I get the feeling that they're making fun of themselves so others can't. You call yourself Fat Amy? Yeah, so twig bitches like you don't do it behind my back. And there's an argument to be made that the funny fat woman is a form of empowerment in a society that continually marginalizes her, a way of reclaiming the agency and attention she would otherwise be denied. Further denying her the right to poke fun at herself would only be telling her what she can and can't do with her body, and that would be no joke. Even though some of you are pretty thin, I think that you all have fat hearts, and that's what matters. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos.
This video is brought to you by MUBI, a streaming service we love. Every day, MUBI premieres a new film. Whether it's a movie you've been dying to see or one you've never heard of before, there is always something new to discover. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, MUBI is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard-to-come-by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser-known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline. And there are no ads, ever. This month, MUBI is exclusively premiering the 4K restoration of Bjork's first feature film role, The Juniper Tree. Shot in breathtaking black and white, it reimagines a brother's grim fairy tale through a feminist lens. We can't recommend MUBI highly enough. You can try it out now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.